What is up, YouTube? It's Josh Create here with another video. In today's video, man, we have TikTok events about immigrants taking over America, taking over American jobs. They're just swarming out of nowhere and then taking over. Some videos may be a little bit biased. You may not like certain videos. Certain videos I, I, I didn't want to like react to because they kind of pertain to like, you know, racial things. You know, white versus Hispanics, blacks versus Hispanics, how, oh, it's not our fault that we took your job, is you know, stealing. You'll see in the videos too, but I didn't download, I didn't react to and download like certain videos because I didn't want to start a little uproar in the comment section and all that stuff. It's all love over here. Don't take anything serious. I can't lie, as a person from South Florida, it is kind of getting crazy with the amount of Hispanics that's just coming over to America. They're getting everything that they wanted, that they need actually, and they can barely speak speak uh, English. It is what it is. What can we do about it? What can I do about it? You know, I'm not into politics like, well, I am, but I'm not in like, I'm not dispersed into politics. Like I'm not like a governor or mayor that can control or have any type of power over that, you know? But anyways, guys, let me stop talking. Uh, without further ado, let's get right into this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let's go. This video is for all the people that cry, foreigners and immigrants are stealing our American jobs. Let me explain something to you. There's a visa called the H-2B, Seasonal Worker Visa. And the United States government issues these visa to employers to be able to bring in foreign workers. But before they do that, they have to advertise to make sure there are no U.S. workers that want to fill in these positions. Right now, the state of Florida has the highest applicants, the highest filed petition of H-2B workers in the entire United States. They have to advertise this position in the state workforce agency. So this is recorded, calculated data of how many positions are coming in to be filled and how many Americans are applying for these jobs. In 2022, out of the 2,226 positions available in the state of Florida, guess how many Americans applied? You wanna guess? 39. The wages ranged from $7.98 plus tips to $43.50 an hour. Even Trump participated in the program and brought in about 160 workers to work his Mar-a-Lago estate and golf club resorts. Immigrants are taking our jobs. No, that would be American corporations outsourcing labor to the third world in order to make more profits. Doesn't it make you mad to know that American CEOs are betraying their own country's workforce in order to make more money for themselves? No, poor people are coming for our money. No, very rich people are and have been and will continue to do so. No, it's poor people. Poor people are subsidizing the rich and you are poor people. I'm not poor, I'm a capitalist. You're a worker with no capital. I own a home, two cars, my own business, and I have savings in the bank. Exactly, that's not capital. Bullshit! Capital is the means of production. Capitalists own the means of production. The things you just mentioned are examples of personal property for personal consumption. You are living off those things. They are not public resources and you cannot move markets. Capitalists privatize public goods, services, commodities, and resources while exploiting labor. You don't do any of those things. You must be this high to ride the ride. Minorities are taking away my rights the only minority taking away your rights and the only minority that you should blame is the one percent they're erasing our culture they are erasing our class we don't have a problem with immigration itself but we do have a problem with illegal immigration because a lot of times um, jobs are t taken away from black people uh, because of illegal immigration if you go into subdivisions brand new build subdivisions all the employees who work there are Mexicans. There's no black people that work there. I mean, every single employee is a Mexican. You go from subdivision to subdivision and you see the same thing. Um, factory jobs, illegal immigrants work there. So black people are locked out from, from employment 
due to illegal immigration. So we want to stop illegal immigration so black people can make a living. This week, Tyson Foods announced that it will be permanently closing its pork factory in Perry, killing around 1,200 jobs in a town of just 8,000 people. So as Perry residents struggle to cope with mass layoffs, Tyson Foods has its eyes on a different class of workers. The company is now offering new jobs to asylum seekers in other states like New York. Bloomberg says Tyson's tracking migrants in a massive database. They scroll through the data like Facebook. You see a worker you like, tap hire. They even had a job fair. So you were at a Tyson fair in New York City not so long ago where Tyson was basically making this pitch. What did you observe when you went there? They created a database uh, for these new asylum seekers in New York City. So these people would come in, they'd learn a little bit about the company, and for the most part, Tyson had already gone through their various details of their application. And so many of them, uh, 17 the day I was there, and then uh, another 70 a couple weeks later, uh, went off to Tennessee to go start their uh, new jobs as uh, Tyson production uh, workers. Oh, and the jobs come with perks, not just health insurance. Tyson's also offering lawyers to its illegal alien workers and time off to attend immigration hearings in 2034, of course. They're firing Americans and offering perks to illegals. This was the Democrat plan all along. Well, first of all, let's just say we are a nation of immigrants. Mm -hmm. 460,000 open jobs today. Wow. I have 5,000 farm jobs that I need filled so we can plant the crops. Vegetables would rot in the ground if, it weren't, if they weren't being picked by many immigrants, many illegal immigrants. You see even in Florida, some of the farmers and the growers saying, why are you shipping these uh, immigrants uh, up north? We need them to pick the crops. On a construction site in America right now, and you say everybody that's not originally born in America has to leave, you'd have a site superintendent, you'd probably have an electrician and a plumber, but other than that, and maybe some HVAC guys, the MEPs. Other than that, you'd lose the whole job. Every, damn near every man out there is Spanish. And they're coming in and taking the jobs that not Americans want, that Americans don't want. I, look, I've got, I've got crews of American guys. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they don't perform the same way, but sometimes they can get into an industrial setting. Sometimes they can get into an oil and gas plant and it's a slower pace and but I don't think the Spanish guys are, are taking jobs from Americans that want those jobs. I don't, because I, I don't have, I don't have American citizens banging down my doors to come hang steel. The same people that want all immigrants to be deported back to their country are the same people that are giving them jobs. These companies have one objective, and that is to get the job done. And when it comes to labor, they're willing to look the other way and accept undocumented people to work for them even though they will tell you and their neighbor that they cannot stand the fact that these immigrants are in u.s soil and if i'm wrong i need you to explain to me how can 15 million immigrants live and work in the u.s every single day they get up and go to work just like me and you who's hiring them and I know you're asking, well, how, if they're undocumented, how can they be working? I'm glad you asked. They're all using fake documents. Shocking, I know. But the U.S. depends on every employer in this country to verify that all their employees has the proper documentation. And guess what these employers do? They look the other way. And once in a while, you will see ICE do a raid and pull out 15, 20, 25 immigrants that they caught working without proper documentation. And you'll see it in the five o'clock news and it makes you feel like, oh, wow, they're really doing their job. But guess what happens to the employer that hired those immigrants? Absolutely nothing. You know that old saying, if you build it, they will come. Well, if these companies don't stop employing undocumented, they will never stop crossing the Rio Grande. Now I need you to come up with a solution. What should we do? Do we send all 15 million back to their country? Do we have the money to do that? Do we find these companies that are constantly hiring these immigrants without proper documentation? What do you do? 
I'm an immigrant, a legal immigrant to the United States of America, and I'm very proud of it. Yes, I stand against what's been happening at our border. That is unacceptable. As a legal immigrant, I went through the whole process and it took years for me to get my documents in order. It took me a lot of money, a lot of stress, and a lot of hard work. And that's how it should be. The United States has no obligation whatsoever to help anyone from any other countries, especially now when its own people are suffering. If you want to migrate to the United States, do it the right way. Plan accordingly, save money, work hard, and do it the legal way. The doors are always going to be open for you. If you're a good citizen, a hardworking person, you're going to have the best opportunities of your life here. But if you're not, you are not welcome here. I mean, at least that's how it used to be. Now it seems that you are. Now it seems that the United States is opening its doors to just anyone that wants to move to America. No matter if you're a good person, a bad person, what your past says about you, who cares about that? Come in, we're going to take you. If you start killing people over here, if you start robbing people, committing crimes, we're just going to release you with no bail. This has just become unacceptable and every legal immigrant should stand together and start talking about it because American citizens are tired of it and legal immigrants are also. You just don't move to a new country not knowing where you're going to sleep. You don't do that, not knowing anyone and what you're gonna do. And if you do that, then you better hurry up and come here, get in front of Home Depot, find a job and do something about it because that's how most of our illegal immigrants have always done it before Biden said that he was going to give everyone everything for free. We need to start accepting that some human beings are just not good for society, they don't want to work, and they will rely on free things forever. And we cannot afford having these people here. This is a country for hardworking people, people who dream, people who achieve, not losers, not people who want to rely on government assistance forever, especially coming from different countries, where I'm pretty sure they supported the same policies that are making American people poorer right now. And now they want to run away from it. How funny, huh? Latinos are the biggest group of people that are growing here in the United States. I mean, just think about it. Just from 2000 to 2021, the Latino population just in the U.S. alone has increased by 13%. That's insane. Let's look at this chart for an example. In 2000, the population was a little over 35 million. In 2021, 62.5 million Latinos. That's insane. And then look over here. 2040, 2060. Yo, we coming up, baby. Latinos accounted for 54% of the U.S. population growth. That's more than half, so think about that. And that's not even to account all the people who are moving from South America, España, Canada, and coming here to the United States. So I have a very serious question about this illegal immigrant migrant situation. Um, why don't they ship them to like places like Alaska or Ohio? Um, don't Alaska pay niggas to come and live there? Like, I'm confused to why they want to ship them to already overpopulated urban communities. Um, if you did all that to cross the border to get in the country illegally, surely I feel like you have no problem with 22 hours worth of sunlight and a little bit of cold. And this is a serious question. And I really want some serious feedback. I'm trying to understand. Why are military age men pouring across the United States border being given refuge, given cell phones, given ID cards, given money, being taken care of? Why is this happening in the United States? And the Biden administration pretends that it's not happening, but we have the footage. Take a look at your screen. Of course, these are multiple, multiple reports now of military age men uh, pouring across the United States border. And it seems like mostly from China. So it's been a great mystery over the past year. Why are they doing this? Why are they arriving? If you're fleeing a war zone, you, of course, show up with your, your children, your women, your wives, right? These are people that you are saving, the families that you are bringing and trying to find a better life for. But no, there's no children. There's no wives. There's no women. It's just men.
Well, at least until yesterday, we could speculate we had some idea why this was happening. But on the floor of the United States Senate, Senator Dick Durbin has now let the cat out of the bag and explains exactly why this is happening. What troubles me about the debate now about the southern border is it is one half of the immigration equation. Yes, we need order at the border. Yes, we need to have changes in the laws that reflect the reality of the overwhelming numbers from all over the world who are coming to our, our shores and our border. But there is also an incredible demand for legal immigration into this country even now. The presiding officer, my colleague from the state of Illinois, has legislation which addresses one aspect of that. Her bill, and I hope I describe it accurately, says that if you are an undocumented person in this country and you can pass the physical and the required test, background test, the like, you can serve in our military, and if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. Do we need that? Do you know what the recruiting numbers are at the Army and the Navy and the Air Force? They can't reach their quotas each month. They can't find enough people to join our military forces. And there are those who are undocumented who want the chance to serve and risk their lives for this country. Should we give them the chance? I think we should. And let me tell you about... Other so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like we have an answer to the great mystery now why this is happening. Someone who's been tracking these military-aged men uh, coming across the border is Anthony Rubin from muckraker.com. He's been doing amazing reporting on this deep into the jungles. He's been tracking this from through South America, from Ecuador, tracking uh, these migrants all the way up to the United States border and so much more that we could talk about. Uh, Anthony, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Thank you so much for having me on, Clayton. I appreciate it. My pleasure. It's great to have you back. I Specifically today, we could talk about so much of your travels and we'll have you back and we can talk more about what you saw in Ecuador and other parts uh, south of the border. But today, I specifically wanted to focus on this military age men Chinese story. So you've seen the videos at the border, of course, you've seen your reporting. You saw Senator Dick Durbin there basically confirming why they're coming across. What did you discover and uncover uh, in your travels as you were tracking these individuals? Yeah, absolutely. So as it relates to the Chinese, I mean, as you said, I mean, we, we could talk about so much here. This is, I mean, this crisis is extremely complex. But as it relates to the Chinese and what I saw, um, the Chinese have basically established dedicated networks along their route all the way to the United States. And so what we discovered along our, our trip from Ecuador all the way to the United States border are dedicated hotels, basically dedicated hubs where these Chinese illegal aliens stop at. And, you know, it's like known along their route that you will stop at these specific hotels. Uh, one of the ones that we stopped at was this hotel in Pasto, Colombia. And we just stumbled upon it by accident. It happened to be near a, uh, a an airport there. And we, we showed up and we were the only people that were staying at that hotel that were not Chinese. And all of them, every single one of them uh, was headed to the United States. They were either going to be continuing and crossing through the Darien Gap, or if they had the appropriate visa, they were going to be flying directly into Mexico and then crossing up there. But the point is that, you know, whereas, you know, for example, the Venezuelans, as an example, they are extremely poor. They just kind of trek up on foot. They'll, they'll pitch tents along the way. Uh, stuff like that. The Chinese have dedicated hubs, hotels that they'll actually stay at along the way. And it's a very advanced route system. 